Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. And today let's take a closer look at the Klein Tools light meter. This is the ET130. Uh, here's the container for it. Uh, this particular guy has got both foot candles and lux. The range here is zero to 4,000 foot candles and zero to 40,000 lux. It has data hold and min max values, and that's important if you have to operate a light from a distance from the sensor. You know, imagine a switch you want to turn on and off or, or cycle through. Uh, backlight, bar graph, LCD uh, comes with a, a little typical Klein case. Anyway, this guy here, um, it's on a tripod. This is a quarter 20 on the back, so you can actually have a, a tripod mount, which is good, I guess, if you want to um, have it um, set up somewhere. This particular guy has uh, an auto range or a manual range. So right now, you notice it says auto, and over here, I've got it in the Lux mode, and it's auto-selected the 4K. If I cycle through, now it's at the 400, 4K, 40K, or back to 400. So it's cycling through um, the, the settings, so you can manually set it, manually force the range. Uh, you can see I've exceeded this one, overloaded. If I slow it down here with little lights, now you can see... But anyway, or I can hold this down and change it. Foot candles is the default when you turn it on, um, and it's in the manual mode. I can cycle it through to the auto mode. That's usually what I use it in. Uh, so why, why would I want something like this? Um, three reasons. The first is I wanted to know uh, more about the values of light. In other words, applying an actual number on it so I could get an idea of what I was looking at. There are established values for how much light is um, on average needed um, or should be installed in different locations, whether it's a kitchen, a bathroom, a bedroom, a studio, a workshop, an office, a garage. I'm interested sometimes like inside of RVs um, or spotlighting uh, or headlights. Um, or even just uh, dome lights in vehicles. I've swapped out a bunch for LEDs, and some of them I joke, boy, I've turned this kind of dim environment into a surgical theater because it's just blindingly bright. Um, Lux is similar to lumens. Now, a lot of times when we talk about flashlights, we want to know lumens, and lumens is actually a measurement of the absolute output, the total light that is produced by the device. Um, and in order to capture that, you generally have to build something. Project Farm built one. Usually it's a, it's a uh, highly reflective uh, inside um, uh, sphere. And then you put the light at source in it, and then you capture a portion of that light, or as much as you can coming out one particular hole. So it's a, it's a similar measurement. This, the Lux here, if I set that to Lux, is actually... Um, kind of like the lumens in one direction. It's sort of a misnomer because lumens is supposed to be all the light, but it's it gives you an idea. So if like I hit this light, hit this uh, sensor here with this flashlight, the problem is a lot of my light is spilling all over the place. And if it's spilling all over the place um, around the light, I'm not capturing all of it. I'm only capturing some of it. So I don't have to actually have a full on lumen capture system in order to make use of that. Um, what I have to do is have some standardization. So the number will be off, but it'll sort of be off um, by the same um, proportion across the board. So it does give me some good, some good information. And then the other thing is I want to be able to know if some of the fixture installations, LED bulb switches, you know, swapping out compact fluorescence or old incandescence, um, sometimes it seems like things are either too bright or too dim. And that's a subjective thing using your own human eyes, but what I wanted to do was put a value on it so I could actually see how my number compared with either established numbers that are recommended for those installing lighting or if it just feels dim or too bright, is it really? Because then this I can actually compare it to another environment. Or I, if I swap out bulbs and I have a reading prior and after, I know uh, how my bulbs are responding or the fixture. If I put in a new fixture and maybe the, the diffusion uh, gradients are too, too 
strong, it's cutting out too much light, or perhaps I've got some other situation that's um, causing it to not be as useful a light. Um, this will tell me, or at least give me some, some place to start. So that's why I wanted one of these. Um, they run between 60 and 70 bucks. Uh, Klein makes them. There's a lot of companies that make them. Um, I like Klein tools. By the way, I still have not received my replacement bit from Klein for the uh, the Pentalobe um, for opening up iPhones. I think they, they just wanted to uh, make me go away with my last video um, about that. But anyway, I'm still waiting, Klein. So come on, get your act together. Uh, anyway, I like this. Um, I've got a handful of Klein sensors. I'll be doing some more videos on them. But the Klein tools branching out into all kinds of different uh, utility sensors, kind of workshop sensors, I think is great. It keeps me from having to use more computer-oriented or, you know, uh, laboratory sensors. Um, supposedly this thing can take a one meter drop. I don't know about that. I'm not going to try it, but not try it intentionally. But I do think that uh, um, it does seem to be made pretty well. Uh, pretty solid, standard plastic. This is kind of a rubberized material, better grip. Um, I don't see a lanyard hole anywhere on it for tying this. I don't know if people would use them that way, um, but uh, the tripod mount's a nice thing. Anyway, with that, dock out.